don't need to be reminded about the, what the Wilson Center is, but since uh, others are watching this as well, uh, let me simply say that the Woodrow Wilson Center is the nation's official memorial to President Wilson. Um, the Wilson Center uh, seeks to uh, replicate and commemorate uh, President Wilson's uh, twin passions of sound scholarship and good policy. Uh, and indeed, we try to uh, create a bridge between the world of the policymaker and the world of the scholar. Um, I want to uh, thank my colleagues, our colleagues at the Kissinger Institute on uh, China and the United States, um, who are one of the sponsors or co-sponsors of this program. Uh, and I will, uh, as a prelude to introducing our speaker today, um, simply draw note to the fact that Tom Donilon, the National Security Advisor, um, gave a uh, important, much publicized speech uh, on U.S. policy in Asia uh, last month. Um, and it was a remarkable speech for the following reason. Um, it did not devote so much as a single sentence to cross-strait relations, to concerns about uh, conflict between China and Taiwan, uh, or to the possibility that the United States, States might uh, in some manner be drawn into escalating tensions uh, uh, between Taiwan and China. Uh, this may well be the first major address on Asia by a senior American policymaker in literally decades uh, where Cross Strait uh, did not figure as a prominent um, uh, thing to be talking about. And uh, I, th I think that's really quite remarkable. Um, whether or not that uh, is justified, uh, whether or not um, uh, relations uh, between the two sides of the strait are quite as um, uh, non-threatening today um, as Mr. Donilon's speech might lead us to uh, conclude uh, is the topic uh, of our address today. Uh, we are privileged and delighted to have with us um, Ho Yun, who is today a professor in the Graduate Institute of International Affairs and Strategic Studies at Tamkong University in Taipei. You have seen his bio, um, and so I won't uh, tell you everything that's on it. Um, I will note the fact that he's had a number of very senior and highly influential uh, positions, uh, both in the Taiwanese government um, and working for the Kuomintang, the governing uh, party, the current government governing party uh, in Taiwan. Um, he, uh, among other positions, was Deputy Secretary General of the National Security Council. Uh, he has uh, taught. Um, he has had a series of uh, prestigious appointments uh, at other universities and institutes. Um, he was a Fulbright visiting scholar um, at Harvard uh, in 2011-2012. Um, he did his graduate work uh, in Santa Barbara, uh, earning a PhD in political science. Uh, Dr. Ho, we are delighted to have you and to welcome you to the Wilson Center and invite you to come to the podium. Thank you. Well, it uh, gives me a tremendous pleasure, and uh, I have to be frank with you, and you know, also a nervousness you know, uh, to be here. And you know, I want to thank Bob and uh, his program for the invitation. And uh, I'm also happy you know, to see a lot of old friends you know, around the table. Uh, against uh, the drop of uh, uh, Donald's uh, speech uh, last month, you know, I, I, I should say that actually you know, there shouldn't be that much to talk about. You know, but uh, indeed, you know, there is uh, something you know, uh, I want to, uh, uh, I want to uh, regurgitate. You know, I've done uh, some re research you know, along this line. Uh, that is you know, uh, <coughs> the uh, cross-strait relations. You know. And uh, it uh, becomes a, uh, it, it, for the past several years, you know, the uh, cross-strait relations you know, 
uh, became a, a, a fascinating topic you know, for my academic interest. You know. uh, it has something to do with uh, great power rivalry, and of course, you know, it has something to do with uh, how small how a small state uh, mm -hmm. survive you know, in a very uncertain uh, environment. You know. And of course, you know, the uh, survival strategy you know, of a small state you know, is the theme of a very famous uh, median dialogue you know, in a Peloponnesian War. You know. And you know, I see a Warren uh, smiling at me. You know. <laughs> and uh, then, of course, you know, it has to do with the effectiveness you know, of statecraft, you know, whether it's a threat or promises. You know. And uh, then again, you know, uh, we have, as political scientists, you know, uh, we can learn a couple of lessons you know, from the teachings of uh, Thomas Shelley you know, uh, in his uh, uh, conflict uh, strategy of conflict. You know. And uh, I basically uh, did my research in you know, last year you know, when I was uh, uh, with Harvard, uh, Fairbank Center. You know. And uh, the idea is, and yes, of course, you know, as uh, uh, Mr. Donald you know, had observed, you know, uh, there is uh, only peace you know, across the Taiwan Strait. You know. But uh, below no, the surface, no, I see a lot of uh, econom uh, well, political, economic, and no, statecraft no, going on no, between no, the two sides. No. And uh, my story no, has to start no, in, uh, f uh, from uh, the 1992 consensus. No, I believe many of you are already no, well, aware of. No. Uh, that was uh, something uh, achieved uh, uh, between uh, the uh, SEF and the Ar uh, China's Arabs and uh, Taiwan's uh, Strait Exchange Foundation. Uh, the two chairmen uh, in 1992 met uh, in uh, Singapore and then in Hong Kong, uh, uh, <coughs> discussing trying uh, to, uh, to 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 solve uh, the sovereignty issue uh, of one China. Uh, and uh, in the end, uh, through informal exchanges. Uh, uh, they agreed a formula of, uh, I should have said, agreeing to disagree. Uh, that is, uh, both sides agreed, well, specifically, uh, uh, according to the uh, informal exchanges uh, between the uh, two chairmen, uh, uh, both sides agreed to uh, express uh, the principle of one China, uh, 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 respectively. And then uh, <clears throat> later on, uh, from uh, 1990, after the 1995-1996, uh, uh, Taiwan's first uh, uh, free presidential election, uh, uh, Taiwan's uh, attitude uh, toward China changed uh, under pres former President Li. Uh, and then uh, uh, President Chen followed mm -hmm. up in, uh, from uh, 2000 to 2008. This, uh, uh, formula you know, was put on back burner. You know. It uh, was uh, no longer uh, used you know, uh, for any sort of political purpose. You know. uh, in uh, 2008, you know, when President Ma assumed uh, Taiwan's, uh, uh, Taiwan's uh, presidential office, you know, he uh, picked this up and uh, used that you know, as a design you know, to uh, paper over you know, the uh, the uh, the. Uh, uh, differences you know, over a sovereignty issue you know, on Taiwan. You know. So, uh, and uh, China you know, was uh, uh, just uh, happy you know, in that, that time you know, uh, to uh, take that up. You know. So, uh, 92 consensus you know, became uh, the uh, very foundation, you know, uh, the basis you know, of cross strait you know, current exchanges. You know. And uh, then here, you know, I have put to say a few words you know, about you know, China's policy toward Taiwan. You know. We usually say, you know, when, uh, when I was a, a student you know, in the uh, United States, you know, I was taught you know, the behavior of hegemon. Presumably, you know, uh, the uh, uh, Britain uh, under the uh, 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 what, what, what is it? Pax uh, Britannica, and uh, then the uh, United States you know, under Pax Americana. You know. Presumably, you know, uh, a hegemon you know, uh, has uh, three phases. The first phase, the first phase you know, is to use the hegemon that would use its power, you know, sheer power, you know, naked power, you know, to change, you know, to influence, you know, mostly in a negative way, you know, uh, other countries' uh, behavior or policy preferences. You know. And uh, the second phase is you know, the hegemon you know, may use you know, its uh, international market power you know, to structure you know, uh, the uh, the uh, the target countries' uh, uh, 
say, uh, price levels no, or economic development. No. And uh, the third phase no, is uh, to use ideology no, uh, to, uh, to make sure that uh, no, the uh, target country's uh, political agenda no, would be in line no, for the uh, hegemon. No. I have to say that uh, the United States no, has done that no, since uh, the Second World War. And uh, of course, no, these uh, three phases are just ideal types. No, they interact, uh, and uh, sometimes they are used no, uh, in combination, uh, in various combinations. No. And uh, China no, has uh, three phases no, toward Taiwan. The first no, is uh, sheer power. And, uh, and of course, no, that includes no, the uh, deployment of uh, cruise missiles no, aiming at Taiwan and that include the diplomatic isolation of Taiwan. But uh, through the years, you know, Taiwan had uh, gradually you know, learned to uh, learn how to neutralize you know, the uh, first phase of China. You know. That is, you know, a war you know, is, uh, of course, you no know, war you know, across the Taiwan Strait you know, is horrible. But we also know that you know, the current you know, international norm you know, does not, simply does not think that you know, norm is a legitimate means you know, to solve you know, uh, dispute, uh, disputes, territorial disputes. You know. That is an uh, international norm as uh, I, observed, uh, I observed it you know, for the past you know, 10 or 20 years. You know. And then uh, <coughs> China uh, is very successful you know, in isolating Taiwan. But then again, uh, Taiwan learned to uh, design around the Chinese diplomatic isolating effort. Uh, well, for example, nowadays, uh, 127 countries uh, gave Taiwan uh, a visa waiver program uh, or, or lending visa rights. And then uh, Taiwan has established uh, over 90 offices in the dip um, semi-diplomatic offices you know, in 65 major countries you know, which just do not recognize Taiwan diplomatically. You know. Thus, you know, at least, you know, uh, in Taiwan uh, is able you know, to somewhat neutralize you know, the uh, diplomatic isolation uh, imposed on China. And then uh, China simply doesn't have uh, the third phase you know, against uh, Taiwan because you know, it's uh, official ideology. You know. Uh, or authoritarian, authoritarian uh, political regime uh, uh, simply uh, doesn't have uh, any uh, 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 attraction uh, in Taiwan's uh, political market. Uh. So the only thing left uh, is uh, the, uh, in 2008 uh, is the second phase. That is uh, to, you, to apply uh, economic means uh, uh, to, uh, to Taiwan. Uh. And uh, indeed, uh, if we a hegemon, uh, wants to apply economic uh, uh, inducement you know, to, uh, to, a, to a target state. And, uh, there must be some sort of uh, asymmetry you know, uh, between the target state's economy and uh, the, uh, and the hegemon. You know. And uh, indeed, you know, there is a tremendous uh, amount of asymmetry you know, across uh, the uh, Taiwan Strait. You know. Taiwan is, uh, Taiwan's uh, uh, <coughs> economy is only uh, seven 0.2 percent of China's. China as Taiwan's leading economic trading partner, taking up together with with Hong Kong, taking up about 42 percent of Taiwan's total exports. And in contrast, Taiwan is China's seventh largest trading partner. And uh, it takes only 1.8% uh, uh, of Ta China's uh, total exports. You know. Taiwan's uh, rely on reliance you know, on uh, international trade you know, could be ma measured you know, by the volume of international trade to GDP. You know, and uh, it's 132%. Uh, and for China, it's only 55%. For the United States, uh, for your reference, I think it's about 24 to 25%. You know, the uh, percentage varies. You know. So uh, you see that you know, there is uh, there's a huge asymmetry you know, across uh, Taiwan Strait you know, uh, in terms of in economic terms. You know. And uh, then, uh, of course, you know, Chinese uh, uh, state structure you know, is uh, uh, inducive you know, to the application of economic statecraft you know, toward Taiwan. That is, you know, it's, uh, most of its uh, firms you know, uh, 
are, I mean, the uh, state uh, enterprises you know, are under the uh, direct aegis you know, of the Chinese Communist Party. You know, thus, you know, these firms you know, can be an extremely useful instrument you know, to, uh, uh, for China's economic statecraft. You know. And then uh, China you know, doesn't have to uh, respond you know, to, uh, really doesn't have to respond you know, to the uh, corporate you know, uh, uh, climate, uh, business climate. You know. That is, you know, if it asks a, uh, st a state-owned enterprise you know, to buy something from Taiwan, you know, well, most likely you know, uh, the uh, state, uh, the SOE you know, would you know, obey. You know. But uh, Taiwan is very, very different. You know. And uh, <coughs> Taiwan government you know, has to respond to public opinion in general and to uh, uh, corporate pressure. Uh, it has to, uh, well, for, I think for most liberal democracies, you know, the government is, is responsible you know, for the good life you know, of uh, the people you know, it, uh, uh, it rules. <coughs> so uh, given uh, this uh, uh, political asymmetry, uh, Taiwan uh, is an easy target you know, for China's uh, economic statecraft. You know. So uh, this is what I did. You know. I collected the data you know, uh, from uh, uh, the data uh, was from uh, uh, the June uh, 20, uh, 2009 uh, to uh, July uh, 2011. China sent uh, 55 purchase missions you know, to uh, Taiwan. And it also sent, uh, uh, well, uh, in the millions, uh, Chinese tourists you know, to Taiwan. Okay, this, the purchase missions and the Chinese tourists you know, to Taiwan you know, are very important you know, because you know, they are the uh, benefits you know, China can give Taiwan and uh, that it can really be seen you know, by Taiwanese people. Most of Taiwan people, they simply do not, cannot see our investments you know, in China. And we, of course, you know, made a lot of money you know, from a Chinese mainland market. You know, but you know, a lot of people cannot see those. You know. Most people do not think you know, in, uh, in terms of macroeconomic and, uh, uh, trends, you know. rather you know, they believe in you know, what they see. <clears throat> so uh, when you go to um, uh, Taiwan's uh, any night uh, market, you, know, you see a lot of Chinese tourists. You know. When you go to you know, all these uh, you know, famous uh, <coughs> uh, tour sites, you, know, you see uh, Chinese tourists. And then this, uh, this uh, uh, Chinese tourists, as well as you know, purchase missions, you know, uh, can can have some uh, impact you know, on Taiwan people's perception of Chinese uh, economic strength. Okay, this is very important. You know. And then uh, of the uh, 55 you know, purchase missions, you know, uh, about 58% you know, you know, is from uh, uh, coastal provinces, you know, 42% you know, from uh, the uh, inland provinces. You know. Presumably, you would think that you know, the inland provinces you know, shouldn't have that much uh, to do you know, with Taiwan in terms of trade and investment. You know. And uh, even Shanxi province, which is very inland, and Shanxi province, very inland, you know, they also sent you know, high-level delegations you know, to Taiwan. And the uh, interesting thing is you know, most of these uh, purchase missions you know, were headed you know, by high echelon officials. You know. Uh, 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 such as you know, uh, the uh, provincial leader, uh, party boss, uh, pr provincial party boss, you know, or the uh, provincial governor. You know. And of course, you know, they naturally you know, draw you know, a lot of uh, media attention you know, in Taiwan. And this is extremely important. Uh, I believe that you know, this is a, a deliberate effort you know, uh, by China to show Taiwan that, uh, hey, look, you know, we, uh, we, we, we uh, uh, we regard you as very important, and of course, you know, the, uh, the uh, side effect you know, is the uh, you know, media you know, highlight. You know. And then, uh, and then uh, about uh, one third you know, of uh, this uh, uh, purchase missions you know, bought you know, industrial goods only. About uh, uh, another one third you know, bought uh, agricultural products, and yet another one third uh, bought bought both industrial products and agricultural products. Now, and uh, through, uh, in that two years, uh, they committed, uh, I think, uh, uh, 
500 million U.S. dollars you know, uh, just uh, for uh, purchases, you know, for the special purchases. You know. And uh, there was uh, uh, one very interesting incident. You know, I think that was in uh, the year of 2010, uh, in uh, August. You know. Uh, Taiwan's uh, the price you know, for Taiwan's banana you know, uh, uh, went down you know, uh, very fast you know, because uh, of over harvesting. You know. So uh, knowing this, you know, the a, uh, purchase mission you know, headed by uh, Shandong Province you know, party uh, boss you know, immediately announced in Taiwan that you know, it uh, will. Uh, it will uh, provide a uh, uh, floor price you know, for Taiwan's uh, biz, uh, banana harvest immediately. You know, the uh, b price of, for banana uh, went back. Okay, this is the uh, extremely important you know, incident, you know, and uh, there are uh, uh, there are some other instances where China you know, would you know, flex you know, its economic muscle you know, in Taiwan. Now. Why you know, China bothers <coughs> bothers you know, with all this and you know, giving presumably a uh, good um, uh, uh, providing profits you know, to Taiwan companies and you know, to Taiwan people? The reason is you know, uh, promises. You know, today's promises you know, can be used you know, for tomorrow's uh, threat, and of course, you know, today's threat you know, can be used you know, for tomorrow's uh, promises. You know. And uh, they, this, uh, the uh, Chinese tourists, uh, tourists uh, as well as the special purchase missions uh, provide uh, a good leverage you know, for Chinese government you know, to influence Taiwan's policy. And uh, then uh, <coughs> the situation uh, came up, uh, 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 well, pretty, very fast. Uh, back in uh, 2011, and uh, Taiwan was engaged in its uh, 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 presidential election. Uh, the incumbent uh, Ma, uh, President Ma, uh, was uh, uh, in a head-to-head, uh, -head, uh, was in a very close race you know, with uh, the DPP's uh, chairwoman, uh, Tsai Ing-wen. And, uh, in, uh, <coughs> and uh, then uh, China, you know, of course, you know, was uh, very nervous you know, about you know, the development because you know, if, you know, well, Tsai ing has already, and as well as DPP, you know, by then had already said that you know, they cannot recognize you know, uh, the very existence of 92 consensus. Oh, on a, on a, on, on a quick note, you know, uh, in uh, the uh, 18th Party Congress you know, held last year, December, you know, China you know, had written you know, the uh, 92 consensus into the uh, general, rep uh, general report you know, for that uh, Congress. You know. So uh, the 92 consensus you know, became an extremely important you know, litmus test you know, for cross trade relations. You know. Okay, bearing this in mind, then uh, you could, uh, we, uh, uh, Wang Yi, uh, director of uh, Taiwan Affairs Office you know, of the uh, State Council, you know, said in, uh, in August, I think, that uh, you know, the 92 consensus you know, is the foundation of uh, a big mansion. The big mansion meaning that uh, the 18 uh, agreements signed you know, across the Taiwan Strait you know, from uh, 2008 uh, to uh, these days. You know. And uh, if you take out uh, the foundation, the mansion you know, cannot uh, uh, exist at all. And uh, then uh, afterwards, you know, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, November, in early November, you know, uh, Jia Qingling, uh, the, uh, well, it has, a, he, he had a very, very long title. You know. uh, how should I say? It's uh, uh, Zheng Xie Zhu Xi, uh, okay. The uh, Chinese Communist, uh, Ch uh, the uh, consultative uh, uh, assembly is, uh, China's consultative, presumably it's uh, supreme uh, legislature you know, in, in China. The, uh, he, he was, you know, Jia Qingling, you know, was the um, uh, chairman of this uh, consultative, uh, consultative uh, uh, assembly. You know. And uh, he said that you know, to a group of Taiwan visitors that uh, 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 92 consensus you know, is uh, the uh, most important thing you know, across the Taiwan Strait. Again, uh, he, he sent a warning shot that you know, if uh, Taiwan, uh, if the 92 consensus you know, does not exist, 
then uh, there might be some uh, turmoil uh, across the Taiwan Strait. Uh, following that, uh, Hu Jintao, uh, in his meeting uh, with uh, uh, KMT's uh, former chairman uh, Lian Chen uh, and the former president of the ROC, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, mentioned uh, in a last book uh, uh, APEC meeting that uh, 92 consensus uh, is important. Uh, and then uh, following that, uh, Wang Yi, uh, this is a, a very uh, tight sequence uh, of, uh, of Chinese uh, uh, emphasis uh, on, on 92 consensus. Uh, uh, <coughs> uh, Wang Yi said that uh, there are four uh, uh, intolerances uh, across the uh, Taiwan Strait. Uh, uh, China cannot tolerate uh, the denial of 92 consensus. China cannot uh, tolerate uh, the backpedaling of uh, cross-strait relations. China cannot tolerate uh, the, uh, the uh, welfare loss you know, of Taiwanese people. And uh, China cannot tolerate you know, the, uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, non-peaceful situation across the Taiwan Strait, and apparently you can see that uh, the first uh, intolerance, that is uh, the denial of 92 consensus, uh, is a precondition uh, to the three. Uh, so uh, basically, it is a threat, uh, at most, and uh, uh, the uh, three consequences uh, following uh, uh, the uh, possible implementation of this threat. Uh, so uh, I could see that, and, uh, and then afterwards, you know, Taiwan's uh, 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 conglomerates, you know, many uh, uh, business tycoons you know, came out you know, to support the 92 consensus. You know. Well, they, only a, a small number of them said that, that you know, they support the mass campaign, you know, but the majority of them said that you know, they, support, they supported the 92 consensus. And uh, then uh, uh, the uh, Commonwealth, uh, which is uh, Taiwan's uh, most prestigious uh, the magazine, uh, business magazine, uh, did a survey on Taiwan's top 1,000 businesses. Uh, and uh, the majority of them uh, was supportive of 92 consensus. And uh, that pretty much you know, changed you know, the uh, political agenda of uh, the campaign. Uh, ultimately, you know, the uh, political agenda you know, uh, was crist crystallized uh, upon the, the 92 consensus uh, that pretty much mobilized uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, KMT supporters. Uh, and uh, you could see that, and then the rest uh, as history. Okay, so uh, what I'm saying here is that uh, China, by investing in Taiwan and uh, trading more with Taiwan, uh, uh, sending more uh, tourists uh, to Taiwan, uh, created uh, a, a very useful leverage you know, for deterrence purpose. This is important. You know. There is a big difference between deterrence and uh, compelence or coercion. Okay, so this uh, economic statecraft you know, toward Taiwan is mainly for deterrence purpose. The next, next question, a natural question for me to ask is, you know, would it serve as a uh, compelence, you know, uh, compellent you know, threat? or coercive threat, you know, if you want. Okay, there is a big difference you know, between deterrence and uh, compellence. You know, deterrence means that you know, if uh, you do something, I'm going to punish you. I want to uh, add you know, my, my punishment you know, into your equation of uh, decision. Okay, for compellence, it means that, you know, okay, unless you do something, otherwise I'm, uh, I will punish you. Okay, this is, uh, coercion or compellence. You know. Both you know, <coughs> deterrence and the compellence uh, threats you know, aim to change you know, the other side's behavior. But uh, its uh, internal dynamics you know, are very different. You know. And uh, again, I said you know, deterrence is uh, if you do something, I'm going, uh, I'm going to punish you. If you declare Taiwan <coughs> independence, I'm going to punish you. And uh, if you um, deny uh, uh, 92 consensus, I'm going to punish you from China's perspective. You know? uh, compelling means that, uh, okay, to, more to put it more concretely, that is, you know, if you do not, if Taiwan does not come to negotiation table you know, for peace talks, for political talks, I'm going to punish you. That is, you know, unless you sit there you know, with, uh, un un unless you know, Taiwan sits at the negotiation table you know, for peace talks with China. China, if Taiwan decides no, 
no peace talks. No. Then uh, China will punish uh, Taiwan. Okay, I'm arguing that uh, deterrence, as the example I just suggested, uh, would work. Probably will work, but uh, compliance won't work. The reason is easy. It's quite simple, actually. Okay, look, <clears throat> if uh, Taiwan complies, uh, China's uh, pressure that uh, we sit at the negotiation table for peace talks, uh, uh, <clears throat> we are not sure if uh, Taiwan will apply the same pressure uh, next time, next round. That is, uh, if we comply, we will be punished further. And uh, then uh, if we move down toward that way, uh, then uh, that would be ultimate uh, reunification. Okay? And uh, there is no way China can guarantee that. Uh, the promise, uh, the, uh, the threat, okay, look, the point is, uh, the other side of uh, promise and the threat uh, are two sides of the same coin. Uh, if you threat someone, and uh, if uh, the target uh, complies, uh, then uh, you have to guarantee a promise that, uh, hey, look, if you comply, I'm not going, I'm not going to punish you. But uh, in this case, uh, if China exerts pressure on Taiwan, say, well, for peace talks, uh, if Taiwan complies, uh, China cannot uh, guarantee there won't be a second round. And uh, if there is no such guarantee, I don't think there is such guarantee. There can be such guarantee, or there can be any such guarantee that uh, is believable uh, to Taiwan. Uh, then uh, Taiwan will not follow through. So <clears throat> if uh, China, uh, if Taiwan uh, resists this pressure, and uh, China backs off you know, from its threat, and, uh, that would be the best scenario for Taiwan because Taiwan would know that it is capable and it has confidence uh, to resist you know, Chinese pressure. And uh, that would be the uh, least favorable outcome uh, for China because you know, China would definitely uh, lose face or lose its credibility. So uh, in this case, uh, if uh, China applies pressure, Taiwan resists, and China backs off. Now, that would be the worst outcome for China and the best outcome for Taiwan. And foreseeing that, now, I don't think now, China now, would apply pressure now, for in the first place. Okay, so that means status quo. And then, of course, now, China won't apply pressure now, to Taiwan. Uh, if Taiwan complies under Chinese pressure, no, and uh, then uh, China will apply further pressure, and uh, that will be the worst scenario for Taiwan, that will be the best scenario for China. Foreseeing that, uh, Taiwan uh, won't give any uh, green light, any light, uh, any nod uh, to uh, uh, cross trade and uh, peace talks or, or to conclude some sort of peace treaty. Uh. So I would argue that. Uh, Compliance uh, won't be successful uh, for China. So uh, status quo uh, is here uh, to, uh, uh, to prevail. This is uh, my guess. And uh, then uh, the next question would be, uh, will someday uh, China have its way? That is very important uh, because uh, uh, China, uh, some people uh, forecast that China will grow uh, 7 or 8% for the next 20 years you know, because you know, China is now developing uh, the uh, Big West and uh, the Western part, uh, the inland part of the country. Uh, and uh, the momentum can, can be uh, sustainable uh, for another 20 years. Uh, and and uh, Taiwan uh, is not doing that well uh, in the uh, economic sphere. Uh, so uh, when China grows bigger, and uh, relatively, uh, uh, Taiwan uh, becomes smaller. You know, will one day uh, uh, Taiwan uh, cave, cave uh, to Chinese pressure? Now, this is uh, extremely important. And uh, my guess is that uh, unless uh, China can cultivate a, uh, cons a, a, a very significant uh, uh, constituency you know, in Taiwan with very high stakes, you know, in its business dealings you know, with China. And uh, this cons constituency you know, would have uh, uh, significant uh, uh, pre uh, uh, presence you know, in Taiwan's political system. China cannot be successful. 
And for us, you know, how Taiwan should uh, defend you know, this possible, uh, well, it, it is not probable, you know, it's merely possible you know, uh, scenario. You know. uh, the best way is to liberalize its economy. And the Barbara is here, you know that, you know, we are not doing a good job there. And uh, trade liberalization you know, would, uh, uh, would attract you know, more international capital, more international investment, which means you know, Taiwan will be a higher stake you know, for international community. And uh, we're not doing that. You know. Taiwan, uh, in terms of uh, trade liberal liberalization, you know, we can keep everything you know, toward our uh, uh, call it chest. You know. And uh, the thing is, you know, uh, <clears throat> our political system does not uh, allow uh, rapid you know, trade liberalization. If you look at you know, all these economies, advanced economies, you know, who had uh, uh, who made, uh, who who are who were bottlenecked you know, in their economic development, uh, such as the uh, 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 Britain in the 70s, uh, to a lesser degree United States in the early 80s, and uh, then uh, the uh, Euro uh, European countries uh, uh, in the 90s. What, what do we call European uh, sclerosis? Scalo scalo yeah, sclerosis. <laughs> uh, <coughs> They all started you now with liberalization. And uh, we are at the bottleneck. And uh, we, I'm not sure you now we are in the state of sclerosis, you know, but I'm pretty sure that uh, we are in the bottleneck. Unless you know, we have a trade liberalization, you know, we cannot uh, struggle ourselves you know, out of this uh, economic uh, uh, statecraft you know, exercised you know, by China, okay? I think uh, I have uh, said about uh, 40 minutes, and uh, I'll take some uh, questions. Well, terrific. Um, thanks very much, uh, Sui. Do you want to sit, or would you prefer to stand? Either one. I'll okay. Sit over here. Okay, uh, we will go to um, questions. I'm going to ask the first question. Um, this is in the context of your overall relationship with the mainland. Um, how does um, the U.S. rebalance toward Asia impact your own security environment? Um, there are clearly those, including within the administration, that say the whole purpose or one of the purposes of the rebalance is to reassure friends, including friends in Taiwan, United States is there for the long haul. You can count on us. Uh, there are others, including good friends of Taiwan, that suggest that um, China is going to see the rebalance as a threat or a part of a containment policy. Um, and among the other consequences of this, um, Taiwan will find itself caught in the middle uh, between these two superpowers. <coughs> Give us your understanding of how what the rebalance means for Taiwan. Okay, uh, if I remember it correctly, you know, uh, Tom Donnelly you know, gave a, a speech at the CSIS, you know, and uh, it, the webcast you know, is on CSIS, CSIS website. You know. In uh, that speech, you know, he emphasized uh, on the uh, economic part you know, of uh, 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 rebalancing. Uh, I avoid using the term uh, pivoting. Uh, okay, I'm following you. <laughs> and and uh, he emphasized uh, on the economic aspect uh, of rebalancing. Uh, and if that is the case, uh, uh, Taiwan is, uh, I don't think uh, we are doing our job. And uh, that is, you know, we are, okay, look, uh, this is uh, very uh, important for Taiwan's future. We have TPP here. We have RCEP you know, under the, uh, right now, you know, under the uh, uh, influence of uh, Indonesia. And uh, if RCEP, that is uh, ASEAN plus, you know, how many, uh, three, uh, two, one, two, three, or four, you know, depends, you know, okay. If RCEP, you know, uh, if China decides you know, to join us RCEP, you know, then China will be the most important economy you know, within the RCEP. You know. And the TPP is about uh, no, high quality no, liberalization, okay? And apparently now we can, Taiwan as of now, no, 
right now just cannot meet the demands of TPP. Okay, but the problem is, of course, you know, we, we can, uh, uh, we want to be part of either RCEP or TPP as long as you know, it's good you know, for Taiwan's uh, uh, future prospect. You know. But the thing is, you know, right now, uh, if uh, uh, RCEP you know, does not, uh, it's, it's just in the offing, you know, it is in, in a very nascent form. You know. And uh, if China joins RCEP, you know, China will be the main voice. You know, and then uh, we will have, uh, I, I, I foresee that you know, we may have some difficulty you know, in joining RCEP. You know. But for TPP, you know, given our performance you know, in beef talks, you know, I don't think you know, we, uh, we are good, good you know, for the uh, high quality you know, trade liberalization. So uh, we are not doing our job. You know, and uh, that is not good. You know. And then, uh, of course, you know, China views you know, this, uh, uh, this uh, 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 rebalancing, uh, uh, mostly in military security terms. Uh, I, uh, I perused you know, some uh, uh, articles you know, published uh, by Chinese scholars. You know, they do think you know, in that way. You know. uh, now the point here is you know, Taiwan definitely you know, welcomes the you know, U.S. You know, presence you know, in East Asia because the you know, U.S. plays an extremely important stabilizing uh, uh, <coughs> uh, power or presence you know, in East Asia. And uh, this is, of course, a very traditional uh, balance of power concept. You know. And uh, then again, uh, what uh, this again, relatedly, you know, there is, uh, uh, this has something to do with uh, theory of alliance. You know. In a uh, uh, partner you know, in uh, each state, you know, in any uh, security partnership, you know, basically has two fears. One is abandonment, the other entrapment. And uh, I have seen uh, American scholars you know, have written that, uh, hey, look, you know, Taiwan may someday drag United States into a war with China, and uh, China is uh, growing fast, and uh, thus you know, we should jettison Taiwan. I've seen this. You know. This is uh, fear of entrapment. And uh, then there's also, there are also some people, American people, saying that, hey, look, you know, Taiwan's uh, rapprochement uh, with China means that uh, Taiwan is tilting toward China. And thus, you now Taiwan is quote unquote abandoning United States. And uh, for us, you know, it's, uh, we intend nothing. Now, of course, you now we have our fear you know, of uh, being abandoned by the United States. Now, of course, you now we have that. That's why Taiwan needs. You know, uh, that's why you know, Taiwan is very transparent you know, toward the United States you know, regarding you know, the, uh, the, uh, inten our, our intentions, you know, regarding you know, how uh, we deal with uh, uh, China, uh, regarding you know, how we develop our, uh, uh, our military uh, strength you know, and so on. And that this is the only role we can play you know, in this uh, American rebalancing you know, back toward uh, Asia. Good, thank you. We have about 15 minutes. Um, let's put two questions on, on the table simultaneously. Um, we'll go over here first, and then we'll go back over here uh, secondly. Uh, Elizabeth, David is going to bring you a microphone. If you'll identify yourself, ask a brief question, then let me recognize a second person. Um, okay, uh, David Brown from SICE. I'm going to ask two quick questions. That's cheating. Both, <laughs> both economics, since that's what uh, who has talked about this morning. The first is, what about uh, the renminbi uh, usage in Taiwan, which is beginning, uh, looks to expand into uh, cross-strait investment, uh, into the issuance of Baodao bonds, a swap agreement between your central banks. Does this give the mainland additional leverage over Taiwan, or does this create a bond of mutual interdependence between the two sides? My, uh, <coughs> the answer out of my topic is neither. And uh, I know now the idea of currency war you know, or currency statecraft you know, as, uh, can be very popular you know, uh, among uh, some circles. You know, but that is not the case. You know. After the Bretton Woods uh, collapse you know, in the early 1970s, you know, uh, all the countries you know, are facing uh, the full loose capital, global full loose capital. 
So uh, hardly uh, can any state uh, apply uh, its currency as a weapon against other countries. I don't think that is the case. The, uh, uh, the uh, only, uh, the most significant uh, uh, currency statecraft uh, was in the 1956 Swiss, Swiss uh, Canal Crisis. And the U.S. wanted it to stop Britain and France to invade into Egypt. So what the U.S. did was selling British pounds. And after just one day, the Brits caved in. Okay, look, no, we're not going to do that. Now, once Britain was out, and uh, France was out. So uh, that was the most significant uh, incidence of applying currency uh, as a, uh, as a um, uh, economic statecraft. But uh, after 1970s, no, this is not possible. So I don't think you know, that has anything to, uh, China can use you know, that, uh, uh, say, uh, currency swap you know, uh, against uh, Taiwan. I don't think so and uh, create some new bonds? Well, for most of Taiwan people, you know, it just opens, uh, opens a new channel you know, for, their, uh, for our domestic uh, uh, savings, to my knowledge. David, you still have the microphone? Okay, did someone else over here have their hand up? Okay, let's come over here to this side then. Uh, Mike Fonte. Washington Lee is on for the DPP. Thanks, Ian, for a very interesting conversation. Back to the theology of the 92 consensus. Um, obviously, people here call it a convenient fiction, and we know the history of that, and it's, we don't have to go back over that. But the point is, uh, when Wang Yi was here in the summer of, nine, of 11, 2011, I wasn't in the room, but others tell me, they very clearly said, if, it's a, if DPP thinks it's a KMT, CCP, Consensus, we can build a new consensus based on a one China framework. I think that was the words he used. Those were the words he used. So obviously it's hardened, as you indicated very clearly, in position in the 18th Party Congress, et cetera. The question is, though, there was a time when the 92 consensus was not acceptable to the, to the PRC, right? They didn't want to hear that word. So I think the question is, is there room for maneuver now, or is it hardened? Listening to your presentation, it sounds like it's just hardened to a point where it's, it cannot be ignored, it cannot be pushed aside. And I guess, obviously, the DPP, as you know, is struggling to come up with what kind of China policy can it have so that it can have a conversation. So that's my question to you. Is it, is it really so hard from your perspective that it's, that it's unbreakable? Uh, it is uh, breakable, but uh, in a very ironic sense. Why China principle is uh, up here? 92 consensus is here. If DPP uh, can jump over this the 92 consensus threshold and uh, hitting a point in, uh, between uh, the 92, uh, I mean between the 92 consensus and the one China principle, China won't have any problem. Okay, I think that that is the case. No. Other questions? Don't be shy. Am I missing a hand? Yes, here we are, sorry. <laughs> Oh, Marvin. <laughs> Marvin Ott, uh, Woodrow Wilson Center. Um, turning from economics to hard security, sort of strategic issues, um, can you speak to the thinking within the security establishment and the senior levels in Taipei as to their expectations or lack of expectation of a U.S. military response in the case of, and granted this in the current climate is unlikely, but in the case of some kind of major military initiative by the PRC against Taiwan, is there a sense of certainty, of uncertainty, or what in Taipei regarding a U.S. response? Uh, excellent question, uh, really. Uh, th that's, that's why I say uh, there is a beauty uh, in creative uh, ambiguity. Uh, and uh, th actually, uh, that, is, that, that, that question should be addressed uh, to uh, the future National Security Council uh, in, uh, in the White House. That's my guess. Okay, look, uh, uh, given uh, this creative ambiguity, given uh, uh, China has uh, developed uh, this uh, AAAD, uh, anti-access and uh, anti-area uh, denial and uh, te techniques. Uh, techniques. Uh, 
A lot of people are guessing that you know, the U.S. You know, would be more hesitant than it was in 1995, 96, in 96 in particular, you know, uh, to come to, uh, to, come to uh, uh, areas you know, near Taiwan. You know. And uh, the, uh, my thinking is, and you know, I used to serve in the uh, NSC in Taiwan. Now, my thinking is, you know, okay, look, you know, given this uncertainty, uh, we have to, to do our best you know, not to uh, provoke China. So uh, this is not actually an answer. Well, this is only a partial answer to your question. Actually, I'm answering the precondition for your question. And uh, there is not no other option. All we could do uh, is to address the precondition, to make sure the cross strait is as, 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 as stable as possible. That is my answer. No. Doug. I'll go ahead and talk louder. Uh, <laughs> Doug Spellman, formerly from the Wilson Center. Still in the Wilson Center. Uh, I can give it to him. Yeah. I wonder if you could address the impact of the uh, disagreement over the Diaoyu Islands uh, and whether this uh, acts as, again, in somewhat similar terms to those Bob used, sort of as a bond since the two sides see it as a Chinese area, but on the other hand, uh, uh, having them work together is rather difficult in how they might approach this. So what is the impact of this disagreement and how might it affect, in particular, cross-strait relations? Uh, <coughs> this, again, is uh, intriguing to me. You know. T Taiwan has said repeatedly, you know, the president has said that, and you know, MOVA has said that, and you know, we will not cooperate you know, with uh, the People's Republic you know, on this issue. You know. But uh, uh, China uh, really wants to give a uh, appearance that the both sides are working together uh, against uh, Japan. Uh, we know that, and uh, Taiwan knows very well that, uh, if that is if we work against uh, Japan with China, that would not only alienate Japan, but it will also alienate the United States. We know that very well. Now. And uh, without the support of Japan and the United States in very broad general terms. Now, Taiwan cannot really have, uh, uh, would only damage you know, its security. So we won't do that. Now. And uh, then again, uh, this thing, uh, this, uh, this uh, Diao Yu thing, uh, is a, um, again, is a tri triangular relationship. And uh, each side uh, uh, would adjust uh, the positions uh, of the other two sides uh, accordingly. Uh. And, uh, now, now I feel that uh, both uh, China and uh, Japan uh, are trying to step down uh, from a very tall ladder. Uh, and uh, you could see that uh, the uh, frequency of uh, the, uh, the uh, semi-military encounters uh, uh, by both countries uh, uh, is going down. And uh, I think it peaked uh, somewhere uh, end, at the end of last year. But uh, from the beginning of this year, uh, uh, things uh, ha have cooled, uh, and uh, that is good for Taiwan, and also good for East Asia. So uh, my guess is, uh, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm really hoping that uh, the uh, whole incidents uh, would be, uh, be a past tense uh, very soon. Okay. David, we'll give you the last question as we gave you the first question. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Reading your recently published, not your personal, but Taiwan's uh, QDR, it is oh, yeah, sprinkled through with references to asymmetric uh, capabilities. Uh, what can you tell us about where your government sees asymmetric capabilities it can use against the PRC? You know why? <coughs> As an undergraduate major, no. I, uh, I, I, major, uh, I majored in uh, English literature. I uh, became uh, in fascinated you know, with uh, linguistics. And uh, there are just uh, so many applications of uh, linguistics you know, to uh, international politics. And uh, if I remember correctly, you know, the idea of asymmetric warfare you know, was developed by uh, Chip Gregson. And uh, gradually, you know, it became sort of code you know, uh, for, that's my understanding, my reading of the whole, the, the, the linguistics. You know. 
uh, <coughs> that is, uh, the uh, asymmetrical uh, uh, warfare uh, means that uh, Taiwan has to prepare itself militarily uh, in accordance uh, with its own uh, economic uh, uh, might. That's my idea. So uh, given the uh, constraint, uh, given the uh, what we call uh, as an economist, uh, hot budget uh, constraint, uh, we just have to adjust uh, accordingly. And uh, not by coincidence, uh, I saw uh, a report uh, in uh, Washington uh, Times. Uh, a uh, reporter said that uh, the new uh, 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 Mr. Hegel uh, ordered a uh, review uh, of uh, rebalancing. I, I read that piece of report. Uh, and again, if that is true, I think that is true. Uh, that reflects uh, how strategy uh, uh, in general uh, should respond to uh, economic constraint. And uh, that sort of thing uh, had happened uh, to small states or great powers. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, British's uh, decision uh, to downsize uh, its colonies, uh, you know that uh, all these colonies uh, no longer uh, uh, were the, uh, most, uh, the, the gems uh, of the British crown. Rather, uh, they are burdens. So uh, they decided, uh, oh, we have a historian here. And, uh, so uh, they decided uh, to downside. And, uh, so uh, the uh, asymmetric warfare and, uh, concept and, uh, basically is about and, uh, how Taiwan should develop, its, uh, enhance its economic strength, given uh, the, uh, the hard budget constraints. That, that's my reading. But uh, what specific uh, uh, weapon items and, uh, should we purchase? I have no idea. I can't resist um, commenting that um, at the very moment uh, Secretary Hagel was announcing this new uh, review, whether or not the Pentagon could afford to rebalance, um, he also named to head up this review um, Ashton Carter, who happened to be in Jakarta at that very moment giving a major speech yes. advocating for the rebalance. Yes, I noticed so, uh, that. I noticed that as well. So, some of us are not quite sure that it's uh, not pre-cooked, <laughs> shall we say. <laughs> um, uh, and we appreciate uh, you being here. Uh, we learned a lot from you. Uh, yours was a very nuanced uh, explanation and presentation. Um, we look forward to having you back. Uh, and if uh, those in the room will join me in expressing our appreciation to Sue. Well, thank you very much. You know, I hope I, uh, thank you very much. I hope I didn't waste your time. No, thank you. Definitely, but my flight. I know. Yeah.